I was going to save talking about this game for a future video, but to be totally honest with you, I'm too excited to talk about this game now. While I was playing a short hike, I realised it was exactly what I needed in that moment. No more, no less, and it was perfect for me at that time. And what exactly do I mean by this? Well, I'll wager those of you that have played the game know exactly what I'm talking about. And those who haven't, I guess you better watch this entire video then, huh? I got the Platinum Trophy in this game two weeks ago, to the tune of about 5 hours or so. My playtime on PS5 is just about 7 hours, but honestly that was a lot of leaving the game open and running off and cooking dinner and doing odds and ends. So it may well have even been less than 5 hours to Platinum. You're probably thinking to yourself, jeepers, 5 hours to get a full completion on a game? What in the cost of living crisis makes that worth it? I'm not gonna lie. I would have thought the same thing if I knew how short the game could really be, and maybe I probably wouldn't have spent the $15 to play it. But yet, I'm so glad that I did buy it, because I spent my entire time playing that game with a goofy smile across my face. It's just a game that is built from the ground up to be fun, light-hearted, and never take itself too seriously, which is a welcome change of pace lately. Whilst it was great as a little change of pace, this game did something that I love and made me feel like it warranted its own video. As the credits rolled, I truly did feel something. I'm not going to sit here and act like it was some life-changing lesson, but it was more of a gentle reminder of something important, that all the different systems and game designs combine to create, and that's why I wanted to take some time to look deeper. But you see, that's the key word I said back there, how short it could be. The beauty of this game is that you can take your own pace and time with everything. There is no pressure. There are no missable events. The closest thing to it is to have a piece of toast at 5pm for a certain trophy. Random, I know. Uh, I was actually weirdly fortunate enough to be able to pick up this trophy naturally and avoid having to reset my PlayStation clock. Minor aside here, but real world time gated achievements may be my least liked, aside from the multiplayer ones. I was just lucky it never dampened my feelings on this game. But back on track. The premise of the game is that you're visiting your aunt on the island and you're expecting a phone call all day, only to find out that there is no reception anywhere except for the very peak of the mountain on the island. So naturally, the character takes it on themselves to make a beeline for the peak to try and make that phone call that is giving them just so much anxiety. Along the way, you'll meet heaps of charming characters with loads of zany and unique dialogue. With so much personality infused into each and every line, you can't help but smile. There's a handful of mini-games and other bits and pieces scattered throughout, and the world is small in a good way, but you will hardly spend 30 seconds without either making progress up the mountain or meeting someone new. It's constantly fresh and engaging, and it doesn't overwhelm you with unnecessary bloat and mechanics. This game is excellent, and you know I've got to spend some time singing its praises to make sure everyone watching takes the time to try it out, if they haven't already. I think one of the key aspects of this game that is honestly a brilliant connection between the narrative and the game design is the condensation of literally scaling up a mountain into a small open world experience. Whilst you can hand wave it away as just being a part of the way that the game's industry works, I think part of it goes deeper. I believe you can see it as an intentional choice of the developer, Adam Robinson Yu, to convey the narrative of hiking up a mountain being an insurmountable task something that seems so large and far away and difficult, even impossible. And then, our character does it. We do it. It's smart game design taking something in the real world and condensing it into something smaller and digestible, as we all know what climbing a mountain entails in real life, so it's easy to make comparisons to. You can draw this analogy to anything. Maybe your mountain to climb is finishing your university degree, or reaching a new personal best in a marathon. A short hike teaches us to enjoy the journey along the way and take our time to build up ourselves at each turn. And then all of a sudden that mountain does not seem so unclimbable. Something that I found really charming about this game is that the main character takes the time to recount their adventures to their auntie once they return at the end of their hike. I know that I hadn't completed every single thing on my first run through on the game. So it was interesting to see my character actually choose to omit those other events I've not yet partaken in. It just helped to make the whole world feel a lot more organic and real. 
It felt like this was such an excellent device for not only getting the player to reminisce on what has already passed, but also to help them focus on what they did accomplish, and to help them feel excited and proud for what they've managed to do. I also love how the different activities scattered throughout the world are used to help keep the gameplay fun and interesting, but it's also used as a pseudo-narrative device. Nearly every single activity or side quest encourages the player to slow down on their big adventure up the mountain. One will have you go looking for a headband further up the trail, but to head back down to let someone know the results of your search. Another will have you spending 10 to 20 minutes mastering the hit game Beach Stick Ball. And the best one, as always, is the fishing minigame. It essentially tells you that you need to stop and stand still and take a moment to breathe and relax. See how this all links into the story? A man character is frantically trying to reach the top of the mountain to receive a phone call, but at the end of the day, stopping to smell the roses makes her better for it. Once again, start drawing analogues to our own life. Taking the time to make the small activities in our day something special and something memorable will only make us the better for it, as it means less memory storage for the stupid things that happen at work. I'd also love to throw some roses to the music by Mark Spartling. The soundtrack manages perfectly to be bright and colourful and full of goofy energy, but also has a bit of a slower vibe to it. This fits in perfectly with what the game has been trying to convey through everything else that has been going on. The happy but slow beats as a backdrop suits the relaxing tone of the game perfectly, and it does really feel like a summer holiday soundtrack. Everything works together so smoothly to ensure the right message is being sent to the player. Slow down. Take your time, work on yourself, and explore. Nothing will change, and the mountain is ready for whenever you're ready. I will say, there are some things about the game that I wasn't super keen on. For one, the boating minigame controls made absolutely zero sense. Essentially, they would control as if it was an isometric viewpoint, instead of if you were the boat itself, like, you know, traditional games would do. Which, it's fine to get used to, except the part where the isometric viewpoint pans and moves around you rapidly as you're in the middle of a race. So you find yourself wrestling with the camera a little bit, and the controls, just so you don't immediately veer into a cliffside. I will also say that some of the feather locations felt a tiny bit arbitrary. That's only a problem if you're going for the full completion, since you'll pretty handily collect enough to finish the game and do the side content without needing to look a bit too deep. The only other thing that eventually annoyed me was when I was exploring the mountain in a lot of detail and taking my time crawling through every single thing I can for the trophies, I would often find the camera swinging way too soon and interrupting my movement, blocking off with the giant mountain in the foreground. Look, it only happened rarely, but it was enough to make a note of it as I played it. Once again, I'm sure if you're not going for the 100% completion, it's not going to be a major issue. The fact that I could only really list off a few things that I didn't like should really tell you everything you need to know. A short hike is exactly what it says on the tin, and it accomplishes exactly what it set out to do. It's an excellent game, and well and truly worth the price that I paid. Whilst this game didn't hit me as hard as others have in the past, the message that was being sent struck a chord with me. I can think of plenty of times that I've been keen to rush into something just to get it over and done with, rather than taking the time to slow down and learn from everything and everyone around me. To take a moment to get personal, I've been going through a bit of a stressful process of buying a house in the middle of a nearly unprecedented housing crisis that my city has never seen and every day I wait and see if our offer has been accepted fills me with so much anxiety. I can't control the unknown. I can't control what happens with everyone else that just love to outbid me. What I can control is my own day. Maybe, instead of sitting on the couch stressing, I can be outside playing some beach stick ball. I think it's only natural that a game that is designed to be a nice, short experience that's completely self-contained and one and done deserves a video that tries to do the exact same. When I was beginning to put this video together and see if there is any further research worth doing, my algorithm decided that I only want to watch a short height content and nothing else. Not necessarily a bad thing, but it certainly did open my eyes to the sheer amount of praise and short form videos that have been made on this game already. 
And here I was thinking this one had slipped under people's radar for a while. So I do apologize if I had retread any ground that previous commentators of the game have discussed already, but that's the beauty of doing this as a hobby. It allows so many different opinions and backgrounds to provide input on the games and things that we love. I know I certainly plan to check out what others have said now that I've finished my video on the game, and I recommend doing the same to broaden your influences. As usual, thanks so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I'm hoping that I was able to provide my own little diversion from whatever it is you may have coming up that happens to be your massive mountain to climb. I don't like doing this at the end of these kind of videos, but I do want to quickly take a moment to do the usual like and subscribe, and then also make a mention of my Twitch stream, which I'm trying to get rolling again, and maybe make it a little less sporadic. If you want to listen to me ramble about all things gaming, please follow and drop on by next time I stream. And don't forget, keep on gaming.